Great. Thanks for the invitation, Kara. Um, happy to be here to talk with you about this project for this class we're doing. Mason is joining me today. He'll be um, talking about the last sort of half of the presentation, but I'm going to get us started. The research team has a total of six students on it, um, and they've been doing great work all quarter to make this work. So this is use of science in salmon restoration plans. So science is often desired to inform policy. We have this great science, but it may or may not be used by policymakers. There's some quotes Obama from his inaugural address said, we must return science to its rightful place in policy decisions, thinking that it shouldn't be manipulated and misused, but rather should be used to inform our decisions. The United Nations Science Advisory Board says it's critical for science to be engaged in the decision-making process more systematically, rather than floating out science and hoping some of it gets picked up. And then UWT mission includes fostering scholarship, research, and creativity to address the challenging problems of our time and place. So not just knowledge for knowledge's sake, but to actually solve problems. Um, the problem, though, I put this red X here, the uptake of science for policy is limited by this divide that exists between scientists and agency managers. Kaplan has called this two separate worlds. Think about the communication styles. The scientists are used to written styles. The policymakers prefer oral uh, styles. Incentives are very different, creating knowledge versus pr problem solving for today. And then the time frame, scientists are more longer term usually thinking, and policymakers want immediate answers to things. Um, also, I'll note that collaborative planning includes many diverse stakeholders, including many non-scientists. So this makes it especially hard to bridge the science policy making divide. So uh, we, overall question is which scientific findings do collaborative planners actually use? Um, we have prior research in this area, some that I've done, some done by others, that found that government reports are often a thing that these managers go to to get scientific information. Um, in addition, conference presentations are very helpful for folks who are making management decisions to see what's going on around an issue. Um, Peer-reviewed journal articles have been shown in some studies of regulations. Um, in addition, we know that consultants can be very important in bringing science to the policymakers. And also, a recent study um, showed that natural science is often used more than social sciences. So the research question we have here is, <coughs> what kinds of scientific information are used to write collaborative ecosystem restoration plans? We have a couple of different characteristics we're curious about. The main one we're speaking about today is the source. Is the science coming from peer-reviewed journals, which is sort of a gold standard of science? Is it coming from government agency reports or maybe conferences? Maybe personal communication, pick up the phone and ask a scientist, books and so forth. There are other pieces here that we're curious about. Are these references current and recent? Are consultants producing the science? Is it more natural or social science? And then is it science that's very place specific or is it broader because it's touching on broader scientific theories? So our methods here, we're looking at documents, looking at the reference section of documents of 12 local salmon recovery plans. There's a map here showing the different lead entities under the Washington State Salmon Recovery Act of 1998. This requires collaborative planning in these areas, and these collaborative planning um, involves diverse stakeholders. These stakeholders come from county governments, city governments, and tribal governance, governments, as well as landowners, uh, business interests, environmental groups, fishermen, and so on and so forth. These are lots of folks who are not scientists coming together with some scientists to try to think of plans to help restore salmon in their region. So for this research, we're doing qualitative analysis. Um, we developed a data dictionary and trained coders on how to code these references, uh, and then we checked for consistency among the coders. There's 1,100 references that we coded, um, 40 to 200 references per plan. So the students were doing the coding, and now Mason's going to tell you what we've found so far. So we had a total of 18 different types of references, uh, sources that we were looking at. Uh, Peer-reviewed journals, government agency reports, conferences, personal communication, and books. Um, however, between all the 12 plans that we looked over, we found uh, three of them that were the most frequently uh, referenced. Uh, federal agency reports were the number one in four out of 12 plans. Uh, state agency reports were the number one in four out of 12. The peer-reviewed scientific journals was the most in three out of 12 plans, and that last plan was a pretty diverse all the way across the board piece. Um, the other popular references source, uh, sources were local agency, tribes, and collaborative groups. Uh, uh,
something that's very interesting is that the government reports are frequently used, both state and federal. I think that has a lot to do with the lead entities not being structured by counties, but also diversified across different counties, cities, tribal groups, so they pick from a larger piece of information. Uh, the peer-reviewed journals uh, frequently, uh, frequently used uh, were typically from a couple different specific journals. They used the same journals um, that were pretty credited that we're working on so far. Um, the collaborative plans are able to bridge the science policy divide, at least in the plans, that's all that we've analyzed so far, and the conference proceedings, uh, communications, uh, they may lead to future reports later on from government entities. Uh, bridging the science is very difficult in the piece because of the different types of stakeholders and how they actually read things um, and what they're looking for in these uh, reports. Uh, we examined the 12 salmon recovery plans, determined which science was specifically used. Uh, most frequent references, federal agency reports, state agency reports, peer-reviewed journals, um, ongoing analysis. We're now looking at the recency of the plans or the references, consultants, natural versus social science, and within or beyond the local context. Uh, later on this summer, we're going to be, well, there's going to be two of us that are going to be going a little bit more in depth with the plans, uh, upping, it up, uh, upping it all together. Um, so, um, the ongoing piece, natural science was the most, was the most, there wasn't much social science that was previously noted before. And we'll see where this leads us over after yeah. now. That was it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I was like, I could have sworn that was the last one, but okay.